Welcome everyone, uh, my name is Lorenzo Fuse and I'm the director of Open Eye Gallery in Liverpool and I'm very happy to be here today with Irei de Lombardia who's one of the artists uh, who's working show uh, at the gallery during the Liverpool Biennial 2014. The exhibition that we are hosting at Open Eye Gallery is entitled Not All Documents Are Records and Irei is presenting and premiering in the UK for the first time um, a quite recent project from 2012. Mm -hmm. That's it. And we are delighted to have both the artists and the work on show. So maybe we can start this conversation. Well, first of all, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Uh, by uh, try to get to know you better. So <laughs> how did you get involved with photography and how does it happen that photography is one of your interests, professional interests <laughs> today? Um, I remember the first camera I had and I think it was something very important for the way I understand photography and this first camera was a toy camera in mm -hmm. fact a plastic green camera that have a spring on it and when you shoot this camera an awful clown appear from the lens instead of the lens uh, I think I could take around 5,000 photographs maybe with that camera that of course doesn't record anything but I was a child and for me it was so exciting to go to a lot of places and try to amuse and scare things with, with this clown and have this image only on my mind and I love photography um, this, uh, this way of experience things it's not only try to keep the things also it's the way you experiment the things mm -hmm. But you have a critical relationship to mm -hmm. image making and photography as well because mm -hmm. as far as I understand your work, especially in the recent years, you mm -hmm. are continuously questioning the necessity to produce new imagery mm -hmm. and to you know, overload uh, any farther society with the production of new images. So mm -hmm. you have this kind of a, you know, love and hate maybe or you know, ambivalent relationship to, to what you produce through the camera. Yes, I think um, that you could uh, talk about photography or make um, a photography art piece without a visual content. And I'm very interested on that. I think it's the moment to reflect about photography, to reflect about all the changes that, uh, and the change of paradigm between analogic and digital photography mm. and how internet and the digital technology have changed our media and I think it's necessary to make a reflection on this and after that try to make a production but it's um, a requisite, it's, in, it's very important to do this reflection first of all. So one question that I normally pose to all of the practitioners that are coming to mm -hmm. exhibit work at the gallery, do you consider yourself an artist or a photographer and is there any difference? Mm -hmm. um, for me it's not an important difference, everything is interesting, uh, but I feel more like an artist just because I work also with other media. I work also with sound, or with a lot of text, and um, also video installations, so I feel more comfortable maybe with, uh, with the label of artist. But photography is for me one of the most important media in all of that because it's uh, an, an amazing discipline. It's very interesting how photography mix with reality mm -hmm. and have a very interesting connection no other discipline have. And I'm uh, just in love by photography for this relation with reality. And going back to what I was um, anticipating before, I mean this kind of you know, critical understanding mm -hmm. of image making, you, you made quite a bold statement by going on Visual Strike mm -hmm. on your website. Can we probably just tell the audience a little bit about the idea and how the idea originated and how it manifested in fact? Mm -hmm. Um, I came to photography from analogic photography and I used to work with medium format cameras, also now with um, large format cameras. So um, when I try to produce a photography work, I need about between two or five years to make a project. Mm. Also with the project that we, we have here, it takes me two years. 
so um, the timing I need is not the same time of a website. The website do need a continuous uploading of the image. It's uh, something that I don't like too much. Also, I don't like or, or I don't feel comfortable uh, with the way sometimes you see the image in, in the website because or in the phone. It's something just like this. And I think you need more time mm -hmm. to, to see an image. So at any moment, I feel like saturate and I decided to make a post um, it was important to me to remove all to remove all the images I had on my website and yes I start thinking about all these questions I told you about the change of paradigm uh, in photography and try to uh, not only theory I take care about theory in photography also to make a change in my production mm -hmm. and I need some time and I decided to to take out all the image of my website and for me it was a good idea. And I think there was something very interesting I read, uh, some comments I read about this action I guess mm -hmm. uh, or statement which was many of your colleagues and fellow artists they thought that it was almost like a, a professional suicide. Totally. Because of course like you know by denying the imagery you know people they lose interest in, in whatever you're doing as an artist as a visual artist mm -hmm. and instead they had been quite successful. Yes, it, it's true because I have more visits than ever to to my website but a lot of friends of my photographers told me, oh you are crazy, nobody's going to know your work, it's uh, very important to have a website but I think you have another kind of channels to show your work and I prefer to show in, in a real contact with the people like in exhibition, exhibition like this one or in a talk or just make an appointment and make a visit to my studio on make another kind of, of show mm -hmm. and show the images in a direct way. You're also lecturing in photography right? Yes that's it. And how do you balance your professional activity as an artist and that of, uh, of an academic or mm -hmm. lecturer? Is it something that it goes together well or? For sure. Uh, in fact, um, like three years ago, I started uh, give some lectures about um, photography on the social network. So I had to study a lot also for my PhD about this change of digital photography and all these things and it, it's very important for, for my work, work to make some readings and some research knowing what the theoretical uh, people and critics and are writing about photography right now is very important to produce later. Mm -hmm. Well, going back to our show and the reason why you're here, um, the exhibition basically is an investigation on the role performed by photography in uh, documenting exhibition platforms. Mm -hmm. And you know, the question that we do pose to ourselves and to the audiences and to the practitioners is whether by documenting exhibitions, photography can retain um, artistic autonomy mm -hmm. and independence, and whether you can be free to create something new mm -hmm. by using documentation of exhibitions as a starting point. And, uh, and so, we were looking at international platforms uh, as we are part of the Liverpool Biennial. Mm -hmm. We thought that we should have been looking at the Venice Biennale as like, you know, the father or mother uh, of all of the biennial exhibitions in the world. But also we wanted to look at Documenta, which is another important exhibition which was established in um, Kassel during the 50s. Mm -hmm. And it was a way to reconnect Germany with uh, contemporary thinking and contemporary visual arts, especially after the uh, the censorship <laughs> performed by the uh, Nazi establishment. Um, and so Documenta is the realm that brought us together. Uh, so you visited the last Documenta. That's it. And that's where, that's the starting point, but I would mm -hmm. like you to tell us how the project started and developed and how does it manifest nowadays? Okay, the project in fact uh, arose from that trip. I went to Documenta in 2012 and I made a trip there for about one week and 
I took some photos there and I see all the exhibits, I visit all the venues and I bought also the catalogues of the documenta and when I come back to, to Madrid to my studio taking my photographs um, I, I was really interested in one of the photographs uh, who was documenting a nice reflection that enters from a window inside a venue that it was called the Orangery and it makes like a kind of rainbow on a carpet but it was not an art piece it was nothing more than a reflection on a carpet but it was inside the venue mm -hmm. so where is the limit it's an art piece it's not an art piece and was so beautiful so i took these photos and i uh, imagined that it was nice that this kind of intruder could be also in the catalogs not only in the venue so wh what i've done is just to unbound about all the catalogs, uh, take out the pages and manipulate the catalogs, make some new pages with new content, with this image, also text, some data, I change the index, I made up a new artist, a fake artist, and I introduce this, this image and all this te text inside the real catalogs. And I uh, alter um, three big catalogs, and also I have published a little booklet with with uh, tell all the whole history yeah. of how I produced this this piece. And so you basically got an image which was created by chance inside of a venue. That's it. And because the venue was so important, it was like in a, such a uh, uh, a catalyst, so to speak, of institutional mm -hmm. uh, aura whatever that manifestation was, mm -hmm. it happened to become almost looking or uh, achieving the same status of an artwork, let's mm -hmm. say. And of course you created the fictional narrative mm -hmm. uh, around the creation of that, of that artwork. But why is that that you decided to create a fictional artist and not making it your own work? Because basically you're becoming there mm -hmm. like an you know, almost um, the archivist, but also mm -hmm. the, of course, the you know the creator of the narrative, and the photographer as mm -hmm. well. Like you know, you basically took the installation shots for yes. it in a way. But for me, the important of this photograph it was just a kind of document documentation. Mm. The interesting thing is that that reflection was an on art thing. La, like probably Alan Capro will say, it. and I'm really interested in this kind of unart things that could give you an emotion or whatever. So the idea was not th uh, that it's my piece. I don't want it to be my piece. The the nice thing is that something uh, an anonymous and something that is made by chance, as you said. So the idea to make made up an artist was just to make up a name. And if you read the biography of this artist is to start saying that this is not an artist, she has never studied in Goldsmith, she is not a multidisciplinary artist, things like that, like some cliches about contemporary art. Sure. And also alter the, these books not only with the image, also for example I use my name also in the credits in the credits of the books and I, w I was uh, I know that I was no I don't have any right of being inside this book but I decided to use my copyright of the images so if you check the rights of the images the copyright is mine and I believe your collaborators and assistants are part of the design team now of the catalog as well yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes I also manipulate all, all the credits and all my team because I collaborate with two graphic designers uh, a bookbinder translators because we have to translate all the text to German to sure. English all appear in, in the credits also and so that makes me think that another crucial element, I, mean, I think that philosophy is very important to you, but I think that another element which is becoming very important in, you know, through this project is mm -hmm. history making, history narration, and how can you, um, how you can kind of shift the course of, of how history is recorded through art. And have you been doing similar uh, projects in, in the past? It's very, can you trace like you know, a genealogy of similar projects? Yes, I have similar projects. Um, in fact, for, for example, uh, I have a project in Venice Biennale um, that uh, I also make a trip there and I found also um, an unusual thing, a big discovery. 
and it was uh, a door inside the restroom with hundreds of calligraphies write down by uh, the visitors of the Biennale during six months and I also had make a book uh, from this door that is called the Venetian door and have a lot of things in common mm. because it also have a book format it's also talk about photography and text I'm really interested in also in the relationship between text and photography and I think have a lot of things in common too, mm. yes. And maybe the last question, there's a, an incredible attention at the moment in um, Spanish photography. Mm -hmm. Why it's do you true. think is that? <laughs> um, is well, that including ourselves, because we do present two uh, Spanish artists in this exhibition, for instance. It's true, it's a great moment for, for Spanish photography. A lot of young people are interested in photography also. Uh, there is also a big market about um, self-publishing and very, very good uh, photographic uh, books. In, at this moment. Um, I'm not sure what, how it start, but I know it's a, a great moment for sure. Great. So, thank you very much for the interview, but most importantly for being here in uh, Liverpool with your work. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.